Hey guys, welcome back to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. This is episode number four. Um, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I hope that this bright and cheerful Tuesday is as bright and cheerful on your end of the world as it is on mine. It's really lovely out today. It's cold and crisp. Um, there's still a little bit of snow left over from the snowfall that we had over the weekend, and and it's just a really pretty day. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually, right behind the camera is my window um, outside of this room, and I'm just enjoying kind of looking at the birds fly. We have squirrels and rabbits that live just out there, and so we see them run by every once in a while. It's really a beautiful sight to wake up early in the morning after the snow has fallen and open the door and there are no uh, footprints, you know, shoe prints from any person. However, you see little rabbit tracks through the snow and I just absolutely love it. Um, I know that a lot of people who have gardens and who work to keep their yards looking a certain way and growing a certain kind of um, vegetation, uh, they, they kind of curse the rabbits here. Um, however, we we don't live in that kind of place. We live in, in an, um, a, a townhouse complex and we don't, we're not green thumb people so we don't try to grow anything. It's all just whatever the, the HOA grows and, and so we think the rabbits are adorable. But anyway, um, I am here to talk about knitting. I have lots of things to share with you today. Um, I, I told you last week that I am a monogamous knitter. Like I, I normally have just one project going. Um, I guess technically I really have two projects going. Um, I'll have a, a, a project that I have to pay attention to, and then I will have a project that's mindless. Normally, um, a stockinette sock, um, uh, or lately it's been my, um, my hexaplats for my beekeeper's twil quilt. Um, and I knit those when I'm stuck at long lights or stuck at a train. Um, I uh, do that if I um, it's, have a meeting or a doctor's appointment or I do it in church. As I said uh, last week, I, I got permission from my pastor before I attempted that. Um, so anyway, um, I normally just have the two projects and I focus on the hard one unless I'm in a place where I can't focus on the hard one and then I knit the, the stockinette work project. Um, and I find that normally when I have more than those two projects, uh, I feel a little anxious over the fact that I have so many, so many things going and it, and it takes so long to get any one thing done. And that's all what I told you last week. And in the past seven days, um, I have cast on like three or four different projects. I, I don't know. I blame it on all the podcasts that I'm watching because really I'm seeing all these things being made and it's giving me all these ideas and it's making me very excited. Um, I will say that the projects that I am casting on are quick projects and so they're going fast, so they will probably be all over by next week, but at least I can say that I did have a little moment in my knitting history where I was not a monogamous knitter. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I guess I should start with what I'm wearing, but you'll notice that I'm not really wearing much of anything, um, knitted-wise. I am, of course, fully dressed because, because I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> but, um, I, uh, I, I just got out of the shower, that's why my hair is still wet, and, um, and so I'm warm right now because I took a nice warm shower and so there's not really much need to wear any knitwear right now. Uh, actually, that's not true. I always put on socks right after I get out of the shower. So I have on hand knit socks. These are socks that I knit just a little over a year ago um, and they're knit out of Nalani yarns. Nalani? N-A-L-A-N-I. Nalani yarns. The 80-20 uh, merino blend. And the um, colorway is green eggs and ham. And the colorway is green eggs and ham. And um, I love these socks. I love this colorway. I mean, look at that. It's, it's green and yellow, thicker stripes with a thin gray stripe. I just absolutely love them. Um, you'll notice that most of the socks that I knit for myself are striped socks. I love self-striping sock yarn, and I love knitting plain vanilla um, toe-up socks. I, I knit them all the time. Um, 
I have knit over 200 pairs of socks over my knitting lifetime. Uh, and, and in fact, I've knit so many that I decided to cobble together the recipe of my favorite techniques and I released it as a free pattern. Um, it's got, um, they're all toe up, although I do have uh, instructions if you want to make them top down. Uh, but I love using the Turkish cast on uh, for the toe and then I also love using the afterthought heel. Technically, I guess it's the forethought heel because I put in waist yarn where I want the heel to go. So I'm thinking ahead. You know, a true afterthought heel is something that you do. You just knit a tube forever and ever, and then when you're done, you decide where you want the heel to go, and then you cut the yarn. Um, I know where I want my heel to go because the socks are always for me, so I go ahead and measure and do that, and I put in a waist yarn, and then I take the waist yarn out and pick up those live stitches and knit the heel that way. Um, and then, of course, I end with Jenny's super stretchy or surprisingly stretchy bind off, cast off. Uh, so anyway, if you want to um, use that pattern, feel free. I mean, as I said, it's just, a, it's just a recipe. I don't own any of the techniques. I didn't come up with any of them on my own. They was just, just the way that I like to make my socks. And people kept asking me um, what, how I made my socks and what techniques I like to use. And, and so I decided to go ahead and put the pattern all together and release it out into the wild as a free pattern. It's called Christie's Stripey Sock Recipe, and, um, and it's out there uh, by me, so I'll link it down below. Anyway, uh, so that, that is all the knitwear that I am wearing today, um, although it is cold enough to be able to wear more. But um, I guess I will show you some of these projects. Uh, oh, no, wait, I have an F.O. I have an F.O. I'll show you first that I put buttons on my mom's sweater. And I blocked it, so um, it does need it does need a top button right here. I um, I miscounted and <laughs> didn't buy enough buttons, but I bought the shop out on the buttons that they had. They're these really pretty, um, almost they almost look like abalone, uh, but they're purple, and I just think they're gorgeous. So anyway, I'm gonna go to the shop tonight and get like a focus button for this top one. Um, and you'll notice that I did not weave in the ends on the sleeves, and that is because my mom has nubby arms, and I'm afraid that the sleeves are too long. And, and I can't ask her how long her arms actually are, because then she would be clued in to the fact that I am uh, knitting her a sweater, and I really want this to be a nice surprise for her. My um, she has no idea that the sweater is coming, and um, so I'm really, really hoping that she likes it and that it will fit properly. Um, I'm pretty certain that the body's going to fit fine. Uh, she's a little bit smaller than me, and I was able to put it on, and the buttons don't quite meet, um, so they should meet perfectly for her. Uh, but as I said, I don't want the sleeves to be too long because that, that wouldn't be any fun either, so I've, I've left the ends out. And um, since the sleeves are knit top down, I can go ahead and just tear back some, some rows if I need to, and, or even add some rows if I need to, although she's, not, she's got nubby arms, as I said, not, not like orangutan arms. So anyway, that's done. But I finished a hat this week. Uh, this yarn is so dark, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these gorgeous cables. I, oh, these cables, guys. I am so in love with these cables. Let me see. Do you see how beautiful those cables are? Can you see that with the seed stitch in the middle? Is that just not... I, I just absolutely love this. This is the hat that I'm going to give to my cousin for Christmas. There it is being worn by me obviously. Um, this is this is the Father Cables hat by uh, Veronica Job. I think I'm saying that right. J-O-B-E. And it is actually a free pattern, uh, which is surprising because the cables are so intricate. And, um, and whoever, and the lady who uh, designed this must have worked on that because that's, these are beautiful cables. Uh, anyway, I love this. Um, it definitely wasn't mindless knitting, but it was so nice to really get into something that I really had to pay attention to again. And I knitted out of Malabrigo Rios in the ivy colorway that I showed you last week. Um, 
I have to block it still, but I think that it is just going to be perfect for my cousin. I, it's just, it's exactly what I was hoping it would come out to be, um, and I'm really hoping that she likes it. The only thing that I'm not certain about is the color, um, but I did go off of what my uncle told me, and he said that green, that she liked earth tones, and, and I showed him a picture of the skein, and he said that, that would be a really good one. So, there you go. And, um, that would be the end of my... FOs, but I can show you, start showing you my whips, and one of my whips is also for my cousin. Um, I am making her just a simple pair of plain stockinette fingerless, plain stockinette fingerless mitts to go with the glove or the hat rather. Um, so this pattern is the Peekaboo mitts by uh, Spider Woman Knits Design, and it is also a free pattern. Um, which is always nice. Um, but yeah, they're just, you know, basic ribbing and stockinette, thumb gusset. Um, you know, I'll finish, I started them today. I'll finish them. I'll finish this one at least today. Uh, I just started the second skein. Uh, the hat took up most of it, but I got... I got to right about the end of the thumb gusset with the first, the end of the first skein. So um, I'm going to have plenty of this left over, which is really good because I think that it is a nice complement to this, um, the skein of apple green that I got um, for myself. So I can make myself a hat and maybe use this as ribbing or even maybe make two hats because I'm gonna have a lot. I'm gonna have most of the skein left over when I'm done. So it's very possible that I could get two hats out of these two skeins, and that would make me a very happy Christy. So next, I'll show you a um, a project which is both a whip and an fo um, <laughs> because it's the beekeeper's quilt that I've been working on for the past five years off and on, um, but a lot lately, on a lot lately. Um, anyway, uh, one of the podcasts that I have been watching and absolutely loving is the Canadian Knitters Podcast, and um, she has a Ravelry group, and they are doing a 2016 mini skein advent calendar cowl, which I absolutely loved. There are there have been some dyers that, that have put out advent calendars for December, uh, filled with mini skeins, and I kind of wish that I had known about them before, uh, you know, the middle of December, and I could have uh, picked up one, because I love the idea of opening up little presents uh, every day for 25 days, or 24 days, depending on the advent calendar you have. Uh, however, I really couldn't have justified buying it, because I have a whole Rubbermaid tub. This whole Rubbermaid tub, just filled to the brim with minis. Um, over, I, as I said uh, in previous episodes, I am a moderator of a swap group, the Chittery Chattery Swappery Swappers group, and um, we swap yarn. And for the longest time, back when the Beekeeper's Quilt was still a really new pattern, we would have special mini swap swaps, and um, I would uh, be the one in charge of those. And so I got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of minis. Um, so I couldn't really justify buying a special mini advent calendar anyway because I need to knit up the minis that I have. I basically just took my Gritty Knits uh, Hexapuff bag that I use as my project for this, or as my, that I use as my project bag for this project, and just filled it with 25 or 24, I think I did 24 um, minis. And each day I just reach in with my eyes closed and pull one out and I knit a flat out of it. And today is December 13th, so I have knit 13 different little flats. They are, um, are just hexagonal knitted pieces. Um, you know, you're not, in, in the pattern it says to um, fill them with polyfill, but I ended up liking mine flat better and so I don't fill them with anything, which uh, does make it a lot quicker to knit them. So anyway, there they all are. Um, This is the one that I knit today, which I love, um, and I didn't like it in the little mini skein, and I was like, ah, okay, but when I knit it up, I think it's really, really pretty. So I'm getting, uh, I can normally get two flats out of each mini, um, but I am only count, I'm only taking photos of one for the, um, for the cowl, 
Um, so I have a couple of extra that I've been just stashing in my bag. So yeah, by the end of December I should have about 50 new hexaflats to add to my blanket. And I already have, oh, about 40 or so in here. So, um, and those are the ones that I've been making over the past while. I don't know how long. Um, so I'm expecting that, um, in January it'll be about time to start putting some more onto my blanket. Um, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that that's going to make it look a little bit less like a, a runner, um, on the back of my couch and a little bit more like maybe a lap blanket, maybe a little bit. So, I mean, I could have about a hundred new minis to put on there. So that, that, that's, that's something, right? I think there's about 200, uh, a little bit less than 200 on there now. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm really excited about that. I've really been enjoying knitting the minis. Um, I used to just keep this bag in my car and just use it for when I got stuck someplace and I needed knitting to do. Like I said earlier, um, I need, I always need to have a, a plain stockinette. I don't need to pay attention to this pattern project going. Um, so I would just keep it in the car. And so I was getting, you know, I'd knit like one or two during church and then maybe one during the week while my kids, while I'm waiting for my kids to get out of school. And, and this is, so that's like three in a week. And this has really made a, quite a difference. Like, I mean, my hexaflat uh, knitting um, prog progress has really just come up quite a lot. So, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. But that is not the only tiny wee little thing that I am knitting. Um, I have tried to, every year, knit something small for my kids' teachers for Christmas. And then if they have something uh, special that happens during the year, like um, two years ago, uh, Tatum's teacher got pregnant during the year, and so she, she had her baby, I think in April, and so I knit a baby blanket, or a baby sweater for her baby, you know, that kind of thing. But generally I try to make something small for, um, for the holiday. Um, I've made bookmarks in the past, I've done, uh, fingerless mitts, I've done, one teacher was, um, was, was the type of person who would wear scar, uh, shawls a lot, and so I knit her a, a, a simple shawl. I mean, nothing really, really massive, uh, nothing that's going to take more than a couple of evenings to work on, but I like to do something. Um, and I completely dropped the ball this year. I got out of the habit because last year I, I home taught my kids, um, so they <laughs> didn't need to knit myself a gift. Um, and so I, I just, I fell out of the habit of doing it. And so Christmas kind of snuck on up on me and I realized yesterday that um, the last day of school before the holiday break is Friday, this Friday coming up, and that I hadn't started anything. And I knew that I didn't have enough time because it's because in the past it has always been just two teachers, basically, Tatum's teacher and Delaney's teacher. However, Tatum is in middle school now, and so she has eight different teachers. So I couldn't make, you know, fingerless gloves or, or shawls or something like that for all of those teachers. So um, I went back to the idea of just making you know, something like a bookmark. Um, however, I am a big reader and I really dislike knitted bookmarks. I think they're too thick. Uh, even if you knit them out of, you know, light fingering weight yarn, I just think they're too thick for the books. So I'm just not a big fan of knitted bookmarks anymore. And so I went a different way. Um, we stopped by Starbucks yesterday and I got a bunch of small amount uh, gift cards, just a couple of bucks, just enough basically for a, a nice cup of coffee. Um, and then a special cup of coffee, not just a plain cup of coffee. And then I thought, you know, maybe I could make um, like an ornament, you know, something small that I could add with the gift card. Um, I, my first thought was to go with little socks because, you know, socks are my favorite thing to knit. And I think that little socks that are ornaments are just adorable. Um, however, I was watching the Cherry Pearls podcast um, a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and the mom, I can't remember her name. Robin is the daughter and the mom is somebody else. Um, she's been knitting these little hearts, these little, you know, filled hearts, basically like the hexapuffs, um, only heart shaped. And, um, and the idea is that you leave them around town with a little note saying, you know, you are loved, you are special. And it kind of just brings up somebody's day. And I thought those hearts are perfect. I could knit 
you know, eight or nine of those hearts in a week and get those taken care of. And so I have started that. Um, I, we, we've discussed how I have plenty of minis to be able to use for something like that, so I knew that that wasn't going to be a problem. So I went ahead and um, uh, printed out the pattern, which, again, is another free pattern. Um, they're all free right now. I, I don't know. It just seems like the things that I want to knit are all free, which is really uh, nice. I never have a problem buying a pattern. I'm always, always willing to pay for a, a proper pattern because, you know, it, it takes work to design something. But, uh, but it is always kind of nice to come across a free one every once in a while. Uh, anyway, the, the pattern is called Love You Forever by Tannis Fiber Arts. And um, I've, I've got the first one almost completely done. It's a little gray heart. Look at it, guys. Isn't it adorable? Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh, I love it so much. Um, I need, I haven't finished it because I need to fill it and I don't have any polyfill. Um, so I have to run down to uh, the, the craft store and pick up some today. But I, I knit this in like, I don't know, 30, 20, 30 minutes last night. So I feel like I can probably do, um, do the rest uh, tomorrow and Friday, uh, or tomorrow and Thursday, I have, um, I have finished my class. I finished it on Sunday, so I am officially on my three-week holiday break from school, um, so I do still have to kind of get the house set up because my parents come in next weekend, um, but other than that, I do have a lot more free time. Plus, Ron is also finished with his class, which is very nice, um, we are on the same schedule, which doesn't happen very often, uh, because, you know, the classes are eight weeks long, so sometimes, um, uh, some of the classes are seven weeks long, so so there's been times when I've taken an eight-week class and he's taken a seven-week class, and that puts us off schedule. But it worked out that we were exactly on the same schedule, and um, so yes, yeah, so we get this three-week break, and so we're going to be watching more things together as a family and doing more things out as a family, which gives me more knitting time. So uh, so yeah, so I'm going to be knitting. Uh, nine of these total. I have all of these minis, and I, my original thought was that I was going to do them all in Christmas colors, um, but you know what? I just, I, I, there's too many pretty colors out there. Uh, this one is for Delaney's teacher, who, according to Delaney, only wears uh, black, gray, or white, and this is just these really pretty grays, and so I thought it would be perfect for her. And yeah, so I'm going to turn them into little ornaments, and I'm going to, um, attach them to the Starbucks gift card and give them to the teachers. I think it's going to be a nice gift. Um, you know, it's not anything really extravagant, and, and, and as much as I would love to do extravagant, we just can't really swing that right now. I'm still discombobulated from moving, but I do feel like it's it's nice enough, and it's, it's better than something that, that they're never, ever, ever going to use. Um, even if they don't celebrate Christmas, or they don't like to put that kind of ornament on their tree. They can hang it from, you know, their wind, their their um, rearview mirror, or they can hang it, you know, by their desk at school. You know, there's all kinds of things that you can do with them. So, so yeah. So there's that. Um, and then the last project I have um, is actually a sock. I um, I had my church, the church that we've been going to. Um, I, have, I don't want to call it my church yet because we haven't become official members, uh, but I think we're leaning that way. Uh, they had a Christmas women's tea last night, and so there was going to be a speaker, and I knew that I was going to need to have some knitting with me. Um, however, um, well, and, and I should say that the reason why I need to have knitting with me when, when I go to an, an event where there's going to be a speaker, uh, like a meeting or a church or, you know, if I went to like a like a convention or something like that, it, because I, I find that if I have to just sit and listen to somebody talk for a long period of time, I end up, uh, my mind wanders. I, I try so hard to get it to stop and to just focus, but I find that as I'm working so hard to focus, I start thinking about how hard it is to focus, and, and that I really, you know, maybe there's something wrong with me. Do I have ADHD? Should I see a doctor? And, and I realize that I've completely come off of the focus again, and I'm thinking about something else. And so what I learned several years ago is if I knit something simple, something in stockinette, like a sock, um, that I can focus. Something about 
using my hands keeps my brain from wandering and I don't even I don't even have to look at what I'm knitting anymore I just knit and they just go and it goes round and round and round and round and round and everything's grand and I don't and and I can focus so um, uh, so I, my, as I said before, I normally take my hexaflats and work on those during church, but, um, those are a little bit more fiddly for this kind of thing. Like I knew that it was going to be a smaller venue and, um, and I didn't want to have to deal with casting on and binding off and getting out all my stuff. I just wanted something that was going to keep going around in a circle. So I cast on a sock. And as I said, I do my socks uh, toe up, so I made sure to get the toe finished before I went to the thing last night, um, which is good. And then I didn't have to worry about counting or anything like that. Oh, 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 I should say. So, um, so my cousin's uh, mitts are in my, my little uh, autumn woody foresty bag that my Aunt Kathy made. And then the, the, the presents that I'm making for the kit, for the teachers, the hearts, um, are in this just gorgeous Slip Stitch Studios um, bird bag, which has just, look, it's aqua and red, and it has these birds on it, and oh, I just love it. This is the, uh, the smaller bag that she has. It's like, I think it's just called the sock, like the sock bag. It's, it, it basically will hold um, one one skein of sock yarn and a sock project, um, and then it's it's lined with this beautiful brown polka dot. Uh, my only complaint is, with this bag is I wish it was just maybe a half an inch deeper, because I find sometimes that I have to kind of uh, get creative with getting my needles stuffed in there when I when I want to close it. Um, but I do love it a lot, um, and and it actually could do with a with a nice washing because I think it looks a little worse for wear. But um, but yeah, I love this bag. And then um, the the project that I have got my sock in is another one that my Aunt Kathy made, um, and it is, also has uh, cute woodland creatures. I love, I love woodland creatures. I love foxes, and I love hedgehogs, and I love owls, and raccoons, and squirrels, and oh, yeah, just everything that's on here. Just basically every animal that's on here. Um, and, and I love mushrooms. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so this is the sock project, um, which is just this gorgeous orange. Orange is my favorite color. So yeah, so I love this bag. But here is the project. Um, I was looking through my sock yarn, and pretty much every sock yarn that I have at this point is self-striping. Um, I, I am starting to... Um, to get some new stuff that isn't striped, uh, but for the longest time I only had interest in uh, knitting striped socks. Like, I didn't care what other genius dye works were out there. I only wanted self-striping socks, and um, and so I, I didn't buy anything else. Uh, however, now I'm starting to kind of branch out a little bit from that. I'm really interested in some pretty speckled yarns and, and some of the gradients and some of the other really cool, even, even variegated is starting to really um, seem really attractive to me again. For the longest time I didn't want to have anything to do with variegated yarns for socks. Uh, so anyway, um, here is, I, so I was looking through, so I was looking through my, my stash and I was like, oh, you know what, it would be really great if I had some holiday yarn. And I don't. I at least at the time I didn't think I did. And I was like, I just I don't have any any holiday yarn. I have uh, Halloween yarn, um, and I have yarn for spring, and I have yarn for fall, and um, and that kind of thing. But I didn't have any Christmas yarn. And then I discovered that I did. I actually did have one a single skein that I've had for years and years. Um, it's not a traditional holiday. Uh, yarn colorway, but um, but it is called Holiday Kitsch, and um, and I do love it so very much. Uh, so here it is. Is that not gorgeous? I look at that, guys. I, I hope this is picking up the the brilliance of these colors. Look at that. Is that not just beautiful? You have um, this beautiful. Uh, just um, burnt orange that is surrounding the purple, and then there's this just gorgeous burgundy uh, that is surrounding this this uh, turquoise, and then in between this this just amazing limey bright green. I love this colorway so much. 
And I cannot believe that it has taken me so long to knit these socks, as I have had this yarn for five years at least. Um, the dyer is Alaska Nancy. Uh, that's who she is on... Um, Oh yeah, that's who she is on Etsy and on uh, Ravelry. Uh, Alaska Nancy. Alaska Nancy. Uh, I, I'm assuming she lives in Alaska. Uh, here is her label, and she's at Alaska Nancy. Not uh, Alaska Nancy. Um, Alaska Nancy. Etsy. Com. I think. Um, as I said, I got this yarn a long time ago, so I'm hoping she still dyes yarn. Um, I have knit several of her skeins, um, both for friends and for um, my own socks, and I love the way she dyes. Uh, but like I said, it's been several years since I purchased yarn from her, unfortunately. And so, um, if she does have a shop still, I will link it down below. Um, if not, I will link the Ravelry page of her yarn so that perhaps maybe you could catch some in a D-stash. Uh, but I just, I'm really, I'm such a fan of the base that she uses. It's, it's nice and springy, and her colors, I mean, look at these colors, guys! Oh, they're so beautiful! Uh, this is a, what is it? It's 100%, oh, I see, so she uses, I didn't realize that before, she uses Cherry Tree Hill um, Super Sock Base and um, Super Sock Select Base in the 100% Super Wash Merino, um, which I like. I, I like that kind of pebbly base, um, and I realize that being 100% means that it doesn't, won't have quite the strength that um, that the merino blend has, but uh, I I have so many socks, uh, so many pairs of socks. I have at least thirty pairs in my drawer right now that I go through uh, regularly. So my socks don't get worn so much that they get holy quickly. So um, I, I don't really run into much problems using uh, just a hundred percent merino. If I only had like five five or seven pairs of socks and I wore them every day of the week, every week, they'd probably wear through a lot easier or a lot quicker. But because, because I just don't, because, you know, it'll go, you know, three, four, maybe five, six weeks before I re will wear a pair, just because I haven't come in con, you know, I haven't gone through the rest of them yet, um, then, yeah, they just, I, they don't get worn out so much. So yes, so this is what I'm working on, and I started this again yesterday. Um, I, uh, a couple more inches, and then I should be able to start the heel. As I said, I do the, the forethought heel, um, so I will, um, get to the point for my foot, and then I will put a, um, a piece of waist yarn, uh, across one half of the stitches, and then go back and put those stitches back on the needle, and, uh, and then go back and then re-knit that and keep going around until I get to the end, and then when I go back through, I will, um, pick up those stitches and knit down, um, and I love the way that that works um, for self-striping sock yarn for the heel. It, I just love the way that it makes the heel look. So I will show that to you when I get these done, uh, which should be here pretty soon because I'm excited about these socks. But of course I have to knit um, the Christmas gifts uh, before I continue on with my socks. I've got to get those teacher Christmas gifts done. I, I still have two weeks to finish. I just banged myself in the head with my needle. I practically impaled myself. Ow! <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. As I was saying, um, uh, I, I have a couple of weeks before I have to finish these. My cousin doesn't come in until the 23rd, so um, I could finish these right, you know, in the 11th hour almost, and and still have them done before I have to worry about giving them to her for Christmas. But those teacher gifts have to be done by Friday morning so that I can send my children off to school with them. Um, so that is all that I have for whips. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> um, but I, I, and, and you'll notice... You'll notice yet again, I, I have not worked any on my red sweater, my uh, my Rustique by Glenna C. Um, I have the backs and the sleeves. I have the back, one back. There's only one back. Uh, and the sleeves, there's two of those. Um, but I, I still haven't cast on for the, um, for the fronts yet. 
And part of that is because I had to get these Christmas gifts done. Um, part of it is because I am working, to, I'm going to try really hard to get 12 sweaters done in 2017. Um, and I do this every year. Like I attempt it every year for the past four years and I've never made it. I think the most I ever made was seven. Um, but I am, I am hoping this year to do it. And so I realized that if I started the, the fronts, I might get the sweater done before the end of the year, which means that I wouldn't be able to count it for next year because they, they say it doesn't matter. I mean, like you, you could just have the ends to weave in or just have buttons to put on. Um, and you, you could do that on New Year's Day and count that as your first sweater for the year. So I'm like, yeah, I could get it done and, and have it, or I could wait two weeks and then, um, and then finish it and have it, you know, have my first sweater for 2017 done in January. And so I'm kind of doing that, I think. Um, although, of course, once I finish these projects that I have, I definitely um, will be looking to that sweater to get it done because, like I said, it is chilly and that is going to be a nice, comfy, cozy, warm sweater and I'm really excited to be able to wear it. So yeah, that's what I've got on the needles and what I have finished. Um, I did get some new stash in this week. Um, it's funny, I didn't buy any yarn, like any yarn, for two years at all. Um, I was knitting down what I had, and I um, didn't really have the extra money, and I didn't really have any, you know, my, my knitting desire, my knitting mojo had kind of diminished, so I didn't even really have much desire to get new yarn. Now all of a sudden I want to get all the yarn. <laughs> Um, and it, it helps that there was the Black Friday sale and Cyber Monday sale, and so I was able to take advantage of both of those um, and get some of the great yarn for really inexpensive prices. I am my mother's daughter. I love to find a sale. Uh, so first, I got some, some yarn from Knit Picks. Um, um, I heard that they were having a sale on Cyber Monday, I believe, and so I grabbed some single skeins of Felici, which I won't be using for socks, but I think that I might use them for hats or mitts uh, for my kids, or maybe socks for my kids, um, or maybe hats for me, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the first one I got is Limeade, which is this just, you know, a nice two-toned aqua and um, some yellow. Uh, I like that one a lot. This is probably a me color. And then I got a skein of Dark Side, which is a rainbow with a black. Um, and this is definitely not a me color because, as you know, I don't do the color black. Uh, but my kids do, and um, so I, this is probably going to be for, for them. Um, and then lastly, I got a skein of Toucan, which is this gorgeous uh, two-tone purple and two-tone yellow, and then two-tone blue, which I just absolutely like so much. So there they are in all of their glory. I just, I think they're very pretty. And then uh, my my last stash um, addition um, is from Madeline Tosh. Um, I did, you saw that I got some Madeline Tosh from Eat Sleep Knit uh, on Black Friday. Um, this was bought on Cyber Monday, I believe, and this is actually from the Madeline Tosh website. Uh, the Cherry Pearls podcast had mentioned that there were like $10 skeins, and I was like, well, I need to go and see that right now. Um, I didn't find anything that I wanted for $10, but I did find things that I wanted for less than $15, and, um, and so I grabbed them. They are both DK weight, um, and they're both gorgeous. Uh, this first one is Long Rider, which I've never used before, um, but I think it is very pretty. It is 75% merino and 25% nylon, and it is in the ceremony color, which is um, just this beautiful navy um, color, I, and I just, I, I love it. I, I think that it is going to be perfect for something for Ron. Um, he's talked about wanting a scarf. I hate knitting scarves. Um, and I tried to talk him into knitting a cowl, let me knit him a cowl, but he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to wear a cowl. Um, I'll wear a scarf, knit me a scarf. So I, I don't think I can do a whole scarf out of this one skein, um, so I might go back and um, get a second one and then alternate. Um, 
But, uh, but yeah, if not, then I may knit this into a hat for him because he needs to keep his little ears warm as well. Uh, the second skein, however, is completely for me. I'm so excited about it. I absolutely love it to death. Um, and it is in DK Twist, which is the 100% Merino, and it, the color is Cosmic Silver. And guys, look at this. Is that not gorgeous? So it's got this, you know, this silver base with all of these rainbow speckles. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I love it so much. Um, it's very similar to the um, holiday, the, it's very similar to the Holly Festival that I got, only the base, of course, is, uh, this is vintage, so it's the worsted, and this is DK, um, and then this one has more rainbow, and this one's more like neon, but yeah, I'm very excited about both of these. Um, I'm not sure yet what either of these are, are going to be, but they're definitely going to be things for me, and they're definitely going to be things that are like right here. Like I'm thinking one is going to be a hat, and one is going to be a cowl, or something like that. I don't know. I think they're beautiful. I can't wait to make them into something, something good. So, so yes, guys, that is what I have for you today. Um, I... I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I, I look forward to chatting with you again next week. Um, let me know what you're doing down below. Uh, you know, this is now a new channel, um, so I, I don't have... Uh, I was doing my videos on my BookTube channel, um, and so I was... Some, some of my viewers were my BookTube subscribers. However, now that I have a new channel, there's not a lot of people uh, around right now, so hopefully those of you who are around to check me out are, um, are talking down below, because I love to meet new knitting friends and talk about knitting things and... Um, and yeah, if you have pattern suggestions or or things that you're excited about with your own knitting, let me know. Let's let's chat. Let's be friends. This is gonna be good. All right, guys. I have got to go pick up my kids from school now. Uh, they they do not appreciate it when I am late. So anyway, um, I will talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. Stay warm. Bye.